All right, if y'all would turn with me today to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 39. We're going to look at verses 19 through 23 today. Genesis 39, 19 through 23. Now, I want to say before I start with this message today, that this message is for those that are born again, those that have confessed of their sins, repented, turned to Jesus Christ for salvation, that have been regenerated, that the Holy Spirit dwells within them. I want to make that point today because if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you have no promise that God will never leave nor forsake you. See, if you do not know Jesus, you may encounter a difficult situation alone. And if you don't know Jesus, you have no promise of a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because that peace only comes through Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus, you have no promise that God is working all things for good for you. For that promise is only to those who trust Jesus. He works all things for good to those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. If you are lost today, that is, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, hear this message, one, as a warning, and two, hear this message as an invitation to trust Christ as your Savior. That when you go through these difficult times in life, and we all will face difficult times in life, but when you go through them, if you have Christ, you will know that you are never alone. So brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever we are, in whatever situation that we face, God always calls us to be faithful. God allows and purposes every situation that we face. Now that means that no situation is outside of His control. That means that no situation is an accident or a mistake. In every situation that we face, whether it's good or bad, rest assured that in Christ we are never alone through those trials. That God is always working. That God is making us more like His Son. And when God closes a door in your life, and you will have some doors closed in your life, when God closes those doors, what are you to do? Brothers and sisters, we are called to be faithful. Faithful always. Genesis 39, 19 through 23. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the example of Joseph, but also thank you for revealing to us that you never leave nor forsake your children. As Joseph went through so many trials, you were always with him. And today, Lord, no matter what we face, in Christ we know that you are with us, that you will never leave nor forsake us, and that you use even bad situations to shape us into the image of your Son. Father, help us to, to really know that today. And help us to realize that no matter what we face, no matter what situation we find ourselves, we are always called to be faithful, knowing that you 
are also faithful. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So Joseph. Joseph had a good thing going for a little while. He was in Potiphar's house. You can read further uh, before these passages in chapter 39. He was in Potiphar's house and he had a lot of privileges of working for Potiphar. But there was a door closing. So the good things were coming to an end in a way. And previously, Joseph also had a good thing going. He had been the favored son of his family. But you know the story. His brothers sold him into slavery. That door really closed on him. So Joseph was painfully aware that life is full of seasons, of good, of bad, ups and downs. And now another door was closing in his life. A door that was closing and it was not Joseph's fault. Now this is a sad truth that other people can impact us. I think we all could probably testify to that. Other people can impact us. And sin guarantees that we're going to have trouble in this world. It guarantees it. And as you look at Joseph's situation, you see that it was driven, the situation was driven by sin. Potiphar's wife lusted after Joseph. And Joseph would not accept her invitation to sleep with her. He ran, he fled away from the sin, the temptation. Potiphar's wife took revenge on Joseph, spoke lies about Joseph, and now Potiphar, with unjust anger, was punishing Joseph. Jesus has told us that in the world you will have tribulation, that you will have trouble. But he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. There is victory in Jesus no matter what we face in this world. There is victory over the grave because of Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us, expect trouble in this world. doesn't matter if you're a child of God or a child of the devil. Devil, you're going to have trouble in this world. But as children of God, we are called to be prepared for this trouble. And what does Jesus tell us to do but to be faithful? As we get to verse 20, we see what happens to Joseph. And this is literally a door closing on him. For Potiphar sends him to jail. Now it could have been that Potiphar could have sent him to death. But he sends him to jail, so we see God's favor already working here. But the door is closed. And I think we need to acknowledge and marvel at this reality. That we see human choice. Potiphar chose to close that door. But we also see the sovereignty of God in this situation. For it was not just Potiphar closing that door. It was also God. And what Potiphar meant for evil, God meant for good. Here is a perspective-changing truth in our life. God has allowed, God has purposed that door to be closed in your life. I know there's a lot of difficult situations that our congregation is facing today. Maybe health situations, family dynamics, finances. The list could go on and on. But you realize that God has allowed it. He has purposed it for a reason. There's no such thing as a coincidence. And there's no wasted trial in the life of a child of God For he is making you more like Christ through what you're going through. Now here's the reality. What you're going through may not be good. I think we can see that with Joseph. He did not get to go to a five-star hotel. He was in prison. And prison was even worse back then than it is now. How was he going to respond? You know, Joseph could have become very bitter. He could have become full of vengeance, thinking about, well, I'm going to get, get back at Potiphar. I'm going to get back at Potiphar's wife. I'm going to get back at my brothers. He could have just been stewing in this over and over again. But we see 
that instead he remained faithful, that he worked wherever God placed him at. In the book of Colossians, we read that whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. So even when you're in maybe a bad job, are you working unto the Lord? Are you working for men, working for yourself? If you're working for men and working for yourself, you're eventually going to be bitter. But Joseph, he was faithful. He looked to the Lord. He trusted the Lord. Now, in our situations, you've probably heard it said before that hindsight is often 2020. You know, you look back at that situation that you did not enjoy going through, and you see what God was doing. Things become clearer to you. Joseph would have that perspective on this prison later on as he looked back and see that God was putting him exactly where he needed to be at exactly the right time. But in the moment, I'm sure you couldn't see that. In the moment that you're in right now with that door closed, you're probably unable to see what God is really doing. So this is a matter of trust. Do you trust that God is good? Do you trust that God is sovereign? That is, He is in control. Do you trust that God is the one that closed that door in your life? You see, even when you don't understand, we're still called to be faithful. We're still called to trust the Lord. Our surroundings, our situation is no coincidence. Sometimes doors close in our life to open up new opportunities for the future. I think many of us could share testimonies of what God has done in our life when we're thinking about maybe a job that He put us in that was a stepping stone. A situation where a new door, a new person that you were able to encounter, God blessed you through that difficult trial in your life. Well, God placed Joseph with Pharaoh's prisoners. Do you see that? When Potiphar had him locked up, he was locked up with Pharaoh's prisoners, not just a regular prison. This was setting up the future for him as he encountered those that worked for Pharaoh, which eventually led to his freedom. God's placed you where you're at. There is no doubt that God was using this situation for Joseph to prepare him for the future. As he was there in prison, he was probably learning new skills of management, something that would come in handy very soon as he worked for Pharaoh. Certainly he was learning patience as he waited for freedom. And maybe God was working out a youthful pride or immaturity that Joseph had. Character development. God's going to do that through the situation that you're facing right now. Sometimes doors close in our life because of our own sin. It's not always a sin of those outside. So God may be correcting us that we would grow to be a holy people, to be more like Christ. Why has your door closed right now? Right now, maybe you don't really know the fullness of why, but God has allowed God has purposed that door to be closed. Do you trust that He is good? Do you trust that He is sovereign, that is in control? Do you trust that He is making you more like Christ? Be faithful where you are right now. Now here's a great truth as we read this passage, as we read the story of Joseph in general. When that door closed, God was still with Joseph. When that door closes in your life, God is still with His children, those that have been born again. And we see that God showed Joseph mercy. Now we talked about this word maybe a few Sundays ago. It's the Hebrew word, mercy, is hesed. And it means much more than just mercy. It's mercy, it's grace, his forgiveness, and most importantly, it was referring to God's covenant love for His people. God was showing mercy to Joseph because Joseph was a follower of God. When God shows us mercy, 
It's because He loves us as His children. And He'll be with us. God was moving in this situation. He gave Joseph favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And we see that God is in control, always working behind the scenes. And He always called Joseph to be faithful. And Joseph was not alone through it. Even in this new place, the Lord was with Joseph. And God is with you when that door closes. And the promise in Christ is that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And the reality on this side of the cross, after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit dwells within every believer. This is how God never leaves us. He's dwelling within our hearts. He'll never leave nor forsake us. Why does this matter to remember? Why does it matter that God is with us? It is because it is God who gives us peace that is beyond our circumstances, that is beyond our situation, that peace that we have with God. If God is for you, who can be against you? It's important to remember that God is with us because when we know that, we recognize that He works all things for good to those who love Him. That means the good and the bad. God has purposed to allow those things in your life to shape you into the image of Christ. That is the good that He's always working for us to be a holy people. We need to remember that God is with us. For it is God who equips us. It is God who directs us. It is God who supplies all our needs. It is God who comforts us. It is God who carries our burdens. Why has that door closed in your life? Right now you may not know the complete understanding of why. But know this. In Christ, God is with you. Do you trust that God is good? That God is sovereign? That means He is in control. Do you trust that He is making you more like Christ through your situation? Be faithful. Be faithful. God was working. Joseph was faithful. And we see that with favor, Joseph was given opportunity to be in charge of the other prisoners. So he probably had a sense of freedom. He was learning new skills. But he was in charge of the other prisoners there in the prison. But in that moment, in that moment, do you think that Joseph preferred this new privilege? Or would he have preferred freedom? Well, I'd say it was likely freedom that he preferred. Now, this privilege was not the worst case scenario. But Joseph knew it could be better. If I wasn't in this prison, it could be better. In this fallen world, I think we recognize that it could always be better. That's why we look to that heavenly city, that city of gold, realizing that all the things that are disordered here, all the pain, all the sorrow, all the death, it's not right. Something's not right in the world. Always, we're looking for a better home. And God has promised that through Jesus Christ. With this door closed, Joseph didn't really see any opportunity for it to be open at that time. So he had a choice to make. He could either be miserable or he could be faithful. Have you ever been miserable in a job? Miserable in school? Miserable in your family? You know, when we're miserable, we can be less productive if we're working a job. If we're miserable, more than likely we're going to make other people miserable as well. If we're miserable, we're not really rejoicing always as we're called to do. Rejoicing always in every situation. And when we are miserable, we are going to nurture sinful attitudes. When we're miserable, we're going to nurture that attitude that's anger and bitter. We're going to be coveting, always wanting something else. Maybe even slothful. Let's not be miserable people. No. No. Let's be faithful to what God has called us to do. Now with that, there's nothing wrong 
with having dreams, of looking outside of your situation and having a hope for a better day, a better situation. But do not let the possible opportunity of a better situation become an obsession in your life because you're always going to be focused on that next thing rather than right where God has placed you. You may be in your current situation for a long time. You may be in your current situation until the day you die. But since God has placed you there, what are you to do? You are to be faithful. God is faithful. And He is going to move you when the time is right, if it is in His good will. God knows what you need. Now, like in Potiphar's house, when Joseph had responsibility, the Lord blessed Joseph's work in prison as well. He made it prosper. And his faithfulness became a blessing to others. You know, I mentioned just a moment ago that being miserable, we make other people miserable. Well, guess what? When we bless other people, that blessing carries through. Carries through your workplace, through your school, through your home. Our faithfulness brings blessings to others. For when we live as we should, in obedience to Christ, walking in the Spirit, we are a light shining in the darkness. That light of love, of kindness, of patience, of honesty, of forgiveness. You know, God may close a door in your life so you can share the love of Jesus. Have you ever thought about that? God may close a door in your life so you can share the love of Jesus right where you are. I realized that when the Lord called me to ministry. I think it was around 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And I was a manager of a pediatrics practice at the time. And I tell you, when I felt that call upon my life, I was ready to go. I was ready to, to go to a church immediately. But God says I wasn't ready yet. And I waited. And this other opportunity came up to manage a medical center with primary care and pain med medicine, radiology, all these different things. And I was like, I told the person that was trying to hire me, I don't really, you know, I don't want to take this. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But God just put every piece in place. And He, he put me there in that medical center. I didn't know why at the time. I, again, I was ready to go. But I was making the mistake of looking beyond where God had placed me right then. That I'd become obsessed with that next step. But God put me in that place to be a witness. I was able to share the gospel with someone of the Hindu faith. I was able to share the gospel with an agnostic. And I don't even remember the whole situation, but I prayed with somebody at my workplace one time. And that person, every time something bad was going on with someone else in, that, in the workplace, they would say, do you want David to pray with you? And I had an opportunity over and over again to pray. God placed me there to be a witness. I don't know the full fruit of that, but I was shining light in the midst of darkness. God knew what He was doing. God always knows what He's doing. Now think about Paul. Paul had a closed door that gave him opportunity to share the gospel. Paul was in prison. Paul was chained up to a guard every day. Now you can just imagine what that conversation was like being chained to Paul. Paul was in prison not going out on these missionary journeys anymore. He was, he was trapped. But this is what he says in Philippians. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Praise the Lord, I'm in chains. People are hearing about Jesus right where I am. He goes on and says, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. The whole palace guard were hearing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ because Paul was in prison. And he says, And most of the brethren in the Lord, 
that is, his brothers and sisters in Christ, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So not only was he reaching other people with the gospel, his brothers and sisters in Christ had boldness. They wanted to have what Paul had, that boldness, that no, no fear in sharing the word of God. Paul set an example. Are you setting an example where you are right now? Maybe you grew up in a terrible home situation. God was faithful and brought you through that. And now you're able to witness to other people. You're able to understand what other people are going through. Maybe you've experienced significant loss in your life. And God has been faithful to bring you through it. And now other people can see that you have hope. Why is it that you have hope? Why is it that you still have joy even after all the terrible things that you've gone through? Tell them it's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. God is working. Even when times are tough, discouraging, dark, God is working. Now some may say, when you're in that dark time, that brighter days are ahead. Now in a way, that is true. As we look to heaven, Paul says like this, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now Paul did not have an easy life. Paul, who had been stoned, who had been whipped, who had been in prison, who had been shipwrecked, who had been bitten by a snake, who had been assaulted over and over again, he says those things are just, these sufferings can't even compare to the glory to come. Brighter days are ahead. As I look to the Lord, I know my future in Christ. But brighter days may not be ahead in your current situation. I'm not going to preach a false prosperity gospel. Sometimes we're going to have difficult times that will continue on. Christ has already told us that in this world we will have tribulation. That door may remain closed. What's your responsibility? Remain faithful. Remain faithful where you are. But I think this is worth noting. Faithfulness does not mean that we're not going to look for other opportunities. Joseph still desired freedom. And he actually asked Pharaoh's cupbearer to help him out when he got out of prison. And eventually he did. But Joseph was in prison for a number of years, at least two years, but some estimate that he may have been in prison for 10 years because he was 17 when his brothers sold him into slavery and he was 30 when he was serving Pharaoh. So all this time he was in prison, he asked the cupbearer, and we know that at least two years passed in between asking the cupbearer and getting his freedom. What did Joseph do that whole time? He stayed faithful. And when God opened the door, he was ready to move. He said, God knows when we are ready to move. So why has your door closed? Well, God's using it for good. I can tell you that. He's making you more into the image of Christ through this situation. And sometimes that's going to be very, very painful. Right now, you may not know fully why you're going through what you're going through. But there is a purpose of where you're at. So right now, be faithful. In the future, be faithful. Looking at Joseph, it was no fault of his own that he faced this closed door, this prison cell. But God allows, God purposes every situation. And as such, know this, that no situation... No situation is outside of His control. It's not by accident that you are where you are. There's no such thing as a mistake with God. Author Timmy, Tim Keller said it this way, If we knew all that God knows, we would ask for exactly what He has given us. What a huge statement. If we knew what God knows, we would ask for exactly what He has given us. Because when we turn...
to Christ for salvation. He is making us into a holy people. We are being a witness in the world, a light in the dark place. So in every situation, good or bad, rest assured, in Christ you are never alone. Now we have this matter of trust that we must address. Do you trust that God is still good? Do you trust that God is sovereign? That He is in control of your situation? Do you trust that He is the one that closed that door? You see, even when you don't understand why, we are called to be faithful. Father, I thank You for Your Word today. I thank You that You are all wise, that You are holy, that You are merciful. And I thank You for the precious promises that we have in Christ Jesus alone. The promise that You will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter where we go, You are with us, Lord. And Father, we thank You for the great promises that You work all things for good to those who love You, to those who are called by Your name, to those who have trusted Jesus Christ for salvation. You're working even these bad situations to make us a holy people, to make us into the image of Christ. Father, as we consider where we are right now, pray that we would be faithful, that we would trust You, that You know what You are doing, and that we would be a light in the darkness, right where we are, Lord. That others would know about Jesus because the way we live our lives, the way that we speak, the things that we share, Help us to be a people of hope, to have great confidence in all that we face. And Father, if there is anyone that has not trusted Jesus as their Savior, help them to realize these promises are not theirs unless they repent and turn to Jesus for salvation. Father, I pray you just bless my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that we would just be pleasing to you and that we would be faithful. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.